and welcome back to the channel. On this video, I want to talk about first time bike purchase uh, that purchases that's e bikes, I should mention. Uh, so, this is for first time e bike purchasers. It can be um, overwhelming uh, to say the least to buy your first e bike, and so I'm going to give you a few tips on things you should look out for or have planned when looking at purchasing an e-bike. Number one, I would say very first uh, on the list would be to set a budget. Uh, you need a budget to uh, let you know how much you're gonna spend and then you go from there on what you can buy based on your budget. So that would be the first one. The second thing I would do is look for a particular style of bike that you're interested in. Are you looking for a trike? Are you looking for a mountain bike? Are you looking for a cruiser style, a scrambler, moped style, um, a folding bike? You know, uh, all of, look at all of those and pick which one uh, is going to suit you and what you're looking for for your ride. And then after that, I would uh, look at where you're riding. Like, are you going to be riding? Uh, is this a commuter bike? Is this one that you're going to be riding just for pleasure, maybe around the town? or in the parks, you know, uh, on bike trails. Um, so that's going to depend uh, on what you're choosing there as to which bike to pick. And um, I would say then I would look at um, the terrain. So if you are in an area where you've got lots of hills, for example, I would get something that's got a little more oomph, a little more power. Uh, you want to be able to climb those hills and whether it be with your throttle and pedal, with just pedal, with throttle only, whichever, you need a bike that can get you up those hills without uh, having a struggle. So that I would look for something with a little more power. And in a word, that would be look for a bike that has uh, more torque. I would say look for a bike that has some good torque to it. And preferably, if you're going to look for a uh, bike for hill climbing, you might want something that's 52 volt, uh, 48 might be fine, but uh, 52 volt would be better and even 60 volt, but those are uh, a little bit hard to find. Um, there's not as many of those out there to choose from, so you're probably going to be in the 48 or possibly a 52 volt. And then after that, I would look at, I would go by the looks of the bike. I mean, you gotta, you know, you want something that's going to look good too, right? You want one that's going to suit you. Uh, the color you like, and speaking of color, not all the bikes uh, come with all kinds of colors. Some of them are limited to just one or two or three colors. So uh, that might be a little more difficult getting a color you like, but you might get one that, you know, just suits you of the choices that you get uh, over, over another one that maybe is not so um, good to look at for you. So that's some of the things there that I would look for. And then after you find out, you narrow it down, I would say, I would look for after that, um, the best deal out there. And I would stay away from the lesser brand names. I think on the first bike, I would go with a bigger name. I'm going to give you an example. So when I purchased my first ever bike, it was a Rad Power Bike, a Rad Rover 4. And I did my due diligence. I did... Lots of looking up because I wasn't sure what I was getting into with the e-bikes. I had never had an e-bike. I didn't know anyone that had an e-bike, so it was all new to me. I'm not new in the bike world. I, I've ridden bikes many, many times over the years, but not uh, an electric bike. So I did my homework, and I went with a Rad Rover 4 because at the time, that was the um, their flagship, if you want to call it, bike at the time. Uh, the model and all and I went with that one because that name was a reputable name that had been out there you know uh, one that everybody was familiar with that's the one that kept coming up so I bought the Rad Rover 4 and then after having it a while um, that was back in uh, 2018 or 2019 I'm always forgetful of, as to which year it was it was either five years ago or six and and then I learned after getting that bike uh, for the area I'm in now, uh, where I live here in uh, Oregon, I need a bike that has a little more get up and go uh, as far as hill climbing. I needed something with a little more juice. 
So I started looking around for my second bike and I, I went to um, look around on YouTube, uh, lots of videos that people had out there and the bike that kept coming back to me um, was the Lyric or the Aerial Rider Grizzly. Uh, the dual motors fascinated me because I knew that with two motors it's going to give you that extra power to get you up the hill. Um, the bike did originally come with two 750 watt motors, but by the time I got version two of the Grizzly, it came with 1000 watt motors in front and rear. And uh, wow, uh, that bike that bike had the power and more. I mean, it got me up every hill, never had an issue climbing hills, good speed, uh, good everything uh, on that bike. I no longer have it because another one came along that I, I like even better. And um, so that's the Lyric Graffiti. And um, so, yeah, that that is important. So getting the first bike, though, is getting, you know, getting your feet wet. I don't think you're going to stop at one bike because none of us do. And so after a while, you know, you start looking at a second bike. You, you're familiar now having experience with the first bike. You're a little more familiar with what to look for. And so then you start getting into the, um, you know, fine tuning what you had before and maybe adding something that's a little bit more, whether it be at uh, range and you want a bigger battery. Um, that's another thing I should have mentioned earlier is you want to, uh, depending on the distance you're going to ride to, you may want um, to get the larger battery. If not, if they offer you a dual battery setup, you may want to go for that as well. But those are just some of the things. I think you it's kind of a live and learn situation. I mean, I didn't have a brick and mortar store, brick and mortar, not brick and mortar, uh, store to go to. Um, so I just bought online on Amazon, or not on Amazon, but on uh, uh, Rad Power Bikes originally. And um, <clears throat> there's no, there was very few stores. There's some stores now, but they're not necessarily stores that have the bike that I want. The bike that I want is has always been so far online. So you buy it that way, but you don't get to test ride it, unfortunately. But those are some of the things you can look for. I, like I say, number one, I would set a budget. That's the very first thing. If your budget is $1,500, great. That's probably the price that you're gonna have to pay, in my opinion, to get a decent bike these days. But $1,500, and then I would, I would kind of Keep an eye on the one, you know, if you narrow it down to one or two, I'd keep an eye on those bikes, unless you're immediately in need of the bike and want it right now. If you can wait a little bit, I would wait for some sales. Because especially now, we've got Black Friday, uh, what, about six, seven weeks away, six weeks perhaps, away now. And uh, uh, those are, in my opinion, that's the best time of year to buy a bike. Uh, Christmas and thanks or, uh, Christmas and the Black Friday, particularly the B Black Friday. That's the, the one I would uh, hone in on and uh, see what you can get. Because with your $1,500, assuming that's your budget, we're just using that as an example, you might get yourself a $2,000 bike or a $2,200 bike for the price of the $1,500. So be that a little bit more power or a little more battery, Maybe they're throwing in some extra accessories that you're interested in. Um, then you got yourself a good deal right there. So those are some of the tips I would say on first uh, time buyers. And I can tell you right now, if you've never ridden an electric bike and you get on a bike for the very first time, you're going to love it and you're going to become addicted just like myself and many other riders out there. It's that great. Trust me, you're going to love it. All right, well, that's going to do it for this video. A little different setup here. We've got the uh, uh, in-studio setup this time around. I hope you're enjoying this video. And if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you want to be notified as to when the next video comes up on the channel, just hit that notification bell. If you'd like to uh, subscribe to the channel and help support us, thank you very much. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And if you want to leave a comment on this or any other video, maybe you've got some tips you'd like to share with others as far as buying their first ever electric bike, please do leave that in the comments below and share it with everyone. And also, I'd like to uh, uh, find out what your uh, opinion is on this setup. Do you like this setup? Um, I plan on doing some more of these, so hopefully you do. And um, 
It'll help get me through the winter without having to ride in all the adverse weather. I'll take a break from time to time and do some in-studio uh, setups like this one. So um, once again, thank you for joining me on this video. And you guys take care out there and always keep your wheels on the road. See you later.